In this session, I'm going to show you how to make sure your A-level NEA or project is complex enough for you to get the highest marks. Hey, I'm Holly, I'm the founder of Teach All About It, and I'm about to show you how to get the highest marks on your A-level NEA. The NEA is also known as the project, um, and we are going to be looking at how to assess the complexity of your project and how to choose a project topic that's really going to get you useful marks, but also a digital portfolio. So let's get going. We talked about that 20% of your A-level is now project work. Now, previously we had the percentages of 40% of the A2 year, which sounded an awful lot more. But actually, when you look at the whole A-level, it's actually only 24% of the total. So it's only gone down by 4%. So all of those students who have been saying, oh, well, why do we have to put all this six months worth of effort into, uh, into a project? Well, in this case, actually, it's only worth 4% less. So really, you only want to reduce your workload by 4%. The 4% that you are reducing is actually the documentation. So all of the exam boards have reduced the onus on documentation and upped the onus on the actual programming, which is based upon your feedback or rather your predecessor's feedback where they said too much writing. Um, so that's what they've taken out. So 20% is that buffer that can get you several grade boundaries. So you really want to make sure that your project is well worth the 20% that you want to add to your entire A-level grade. So let's have a look at this issue of complexity. I'm going to talk about the AQA syllabus and the OCR syllabus. Of course, there are others out there and there are lots of you who are going to be studying them. Um, and really, there's not a huge amount of difference between them. The reason I've chosen AQA and OCR is because in terms of the project work that you want to do, you want to be changing the way that you identify your project based upon what it is that you need to do for your write-up. Now, AQA are much more to do with the uh, programming, to do with the technical aspects, and you are going to need to make sure that your project is of a specific complexity standard because they still have their three levels of complexity that you need to meet. Now, OCR have changed that in that it has to be sufficiently complex to access the range of marks available to you. So your marks are not throttled depending on how complex your project is, as you would be with AQA. However, you do have to have a higher baseline for your project complexity. So in both cases, you want to aim for a highly complex project. Now what I'm going to do in this session is to take you through what makes an A-level project. So what complexity do you need to have in there when you are looking at your project proposals and also when you are identifying the code that you have created? So simple projects would be accepted by AQA, but not at OCR. So these types of projects are too simple for your OCR A-level computer science project. If you use a linear search, so using single dimensional array, um, if you use simple data types. Now, when we talk about simple data types, we mean things like our strings, uh, integers, all of the basic data types that you learned in that first year. In order to make these more complex, you would want to increase them to user defined data types. So things like records. If you have a single table database, so a flat file, or you have limited SQL, so you make maybe a few select queries, you add some information into your database, but not very much. AQA would allow you to be awarded marks for very, very basic code, but you would be restricted to no more than nine marks. For OCR, you wouldn't receive any marks at all because this would not be of an A-level standard. So what do we need to do to make it of an A-level standard? Well, this is where AQA and OCR start to become a little bit closer in terms of what it is that you need to do. 
So here we're looking at two-dimensional arrays. Now we talk about multi-dimensional arrays because technically you can have more than two, but they aren't looking for that. They're looking for things like bubble sort, binary search. Uh, if you are playing a game, then making sure that that has an aspect of uh, the 2D array. If you're not sure, go and have a look at some of the older papers, especially for AQA because they have the pre-releases and they will show you how an exam board would actually present a multi-dimensional array. Reading and writing to text files should have come up in your first year, um, and if it hasn't, it's definitely one to study. If you can read and write to a text file, this allows you an adequate project. If you have a single table SQL statement, so you are only selecting information from one table, however, your relational database has been implemented, then you would be of an adequate level. Um, in this case, having a simple object-oriented model. This means that you have created classes and you are creating instances as objects. But at this point, you might not be creating them dynamically. So not actually creating your objects within the code as you go. Um, and you may well have created a simple client-server model. Now, this allows for 18 marks at AQA or 15 marks for OCR, and that's purely for your code. For OCR, anything that you see up there is of an A-level standard. Now, one thing to be aware of, you don't have to do all five. You only need to select a selection of them. So when we talk about the project complexity, it's about the line of best fit. Now you can move on to a complex project. Now for OCR, this is still only worth 15 marks, which is an interesting aspect of the OCR area because actually you are going to get 15 marks for an adequate project and also for a complex project. But where the marks then are um, in increased for OCR is where you write um, where you write up your testing, where you write up your documentation, um, and also for your design aspects. So for OCR, your actual documentation is far more weighted towards the marks you are going to receive. For AQA, it's slightly different. So if you implement something which is of a complex nature, and that's usually something which comes from either the second year theory areas, so things like recursion, optimization, hash tables, stacks, queues, etc, etc, um, or something from the higher maths areas. So if you, are, if you are studying further maths, if you are studying physics, all of those areas from A2 are going to just add up to a complex project. So if you're looking for more, you can find me on the links below on teachallaboutit.uk. You can find me on Twitter at teachallaboutit. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram and look out for my hashtag teacher tips. And I will see you next time.